In this video, I'll show you how to use images in Tkinter. Hey guys, John Alder here from Tkinter.com, and in this video, we'll look at all things images. I'll show you how to use images in your app, I'll show you how to resize them, and then we'll look at using them with buttons. But before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to Tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, let's get into images. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Batch Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Intro to Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm calling it images.py. So in order to use images in tkinter, we need something called the Python Imaging Library, PIL, P-I-L, or Pillow, as it's known for. So we need to install that in our terminal before we can use this. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my c slash tkinter.com directory, and we just need to pip install pillow. That's a capital P. Now I've already got it on my computer. Oh, no, I don't. And boom, boom, it will download and install the latest version. And that's all we need. So let's come up here and import this guy. So let's go from capital P, capital I, capital L. Now I know we just installed Pillow, but Pillow is P-I-L, Python Imaging Library. So from Pillow, we need to import a couple of things. We need to import image, TK, and image. Now notice this is capital I and capital T, lowercase k. A lot of times people kind of do it like this, just without paying attention. Uh, this needs to be lowercase, and this is capital I and image. So now we have this stuff, we can use it. So how do we use images in tkinter? It's actually kind of interesting. We don't really use images in tkinter, we use labels and we add the image to the label. We've used labels in the past and we know how to do this. So before we could do that, we need to create our image. So if we pull up a little file explorer here, I'm in my C slash tkinter directory, I also have this images directory. And inside of here, I've got just some random images from things I've done in the past. So we've got this, Picture of me in Aspen, I think we'll use that. We've also got this login button. I think we'll use that as well in a little bit. So uh, whatever, wherever you've got your images, try and put them, if you can, inside the same directory that you're working with your file. You don't have to, uh, but it makes it a little bit easier. And I'll show you that in just a second here. So let's create a variable. I'm going to call this Aspen. And this is going to be an image dot open. We need to open the image. And then we just pass wherever the image is sitting. So that was in the images directory. And that file is called aspen.png. Now, like I said, we can do it like this using a relative path because we're in the same directory. This entire file is saved in our tkinter directory. This images directory is also in our tkinter directory, so we can use, use a relative path. If it's not, if it's somewhere else on your computer, then you could, you know, go something like C slash whatever slash wherever the image is, and you can use an absolute path like that. Uh, it's just a little easier doing it like this with a relative path. So, okay, we've got our image there. Now we need to create a photo image, which is what tkinter uses. So I'm gonna take this variable again, and this is gonna be an image tk.photo image. And then we're just gonna pass in that Aspen variable, which is that image we open. So we're opening it. Now we're adding it to an image tk photo image. Now this image tk, is the same as this image TK thing up here that we imported. And inside of that, there's a thing called a photo image. And that's what sort of groups it up and makes it into an image that we can now use. So, all right, now we've got our image. Now let's create a label. And this is a little weird, right? So let's go my underscore label. And that's going to be a label. We want to put it in root. And normally you would set text to something, you know, like that. Well, in this case, we don't need to do that. Instead, we need to define an image. And that's just going to be our Aspen image. Now we can go my underscore label dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20 or so, push down screen a little bit, and we're good to go. So let's head back over to our terminal in my c slash tkinter.com directory, and let's run Python images dot pi. And boom, when we do, we've got our nice little image. It is the correct size that it actually is, and very cool. Now we can do all of the things that you can normally do to a label to this image. So if we want to give it a border or something, we can do that. So uh, let's come back over here and let's just very quickly, let's give this a, a border of say two, and then we can set the relief of the border. Like what kind of border do we want to use? And there's several things you can use. You could use raised, 
Uh, let me just comment uh, raised. There's also a ridge, sunken, and groove, I think, maybe. And then the default is flat. So we can give this a raised border of two pixels. Come back over here on this guy again. Oops. Ah, I forgot to add quotation marks. Yeah, this needs to be in quotation marks, obviously. All right, there we go. All right, come back over here, try this guy again. And now you can see there's a raised border around there of two pixels. It's kind of hard to see. We can kind of play around with this. Let's give it a, a 10, 10 pixels so you can really see it. And there you go. <laughs> looks pretty goofy. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's try, try that groove. Maybe it's grooved, I can't remember. Nope, groove. <laughs> right, so, you know, whatever you wanna do, uh, that's how you do that. Now, what if we wanna resize this image? Well, Keykinter doesn't really have anything that allows you to resize an image easily, but Pillow, the Python imaging library, definitely lets us resize things, and it's super simple. All we have to do is come up here and call the dot resize function on our image when we first open it. And inside of here, there's a tuple and you just give it a width and a height. So let's say we wanna change this to 250 by 188. And let me take this back down to like a two. Now we come back here and run this guy again. Our image has been resized, nice and small, still got the little border around it. That's pretty good. So super easy to use images and to resize them if you want using pillow. But what if we wanna use images on buttons? Can we do that? What if we wanna get rid of the regular Tkinter button look and use a more modern looking button? For instance, like this guy right here. If this is a more modern sleek looking button. Can we use that in Tkinter on a button? Yes, we can, super easy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's come down here and let's create a button. So first let's create a button image. So I'm going to call this a uh, login and it's going to be an image dot open. It's going to be in our images directory. And the name of this file is login dot PNG. So then let's go login equals an image TK dot photo image. And we want to pass in that login. So now let's just create a button. So I'm going to go my underscore button. And that's gonna be a button, we wanna put it in root. Again, normally you would put some text, right, whatever. But now, just like with the label, we give this an image of whatever we want. So log in, let's go my underscore button, dot pack, give this a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen a little bit, save this and run it. Now this is gonna get us, uh-oh, I did misspell image. So image, there we go, all the errors today. So now I'll run this guy again. And we get this image on our button and it's clickable. And there we go. Now this doesn't look great, right? Because there's a border around here and we don't want that. We want it just to be the image. How do we do that? Well, super simple and very similar to the label. We just give this a border of zero. So we get rid of that border, save this guy, run it again. Boom. Now we have a button. We can click it. It kind of looks like it moves when we click it. Fantastic. So a lot of times people say, well, Tkinter is stodgy. It looks old. It's kind of outdated. Well, yeah, but you can make it look any way you want using images. So you can use any type of button you want. A lot of people use uh, like a custom Kinter or a TTK bootstrap type of library to make Kinter look more modern. Well, you don't have to do that. You could just use images and make it look as modern as you want. So and that's how you do that. Now this button is a little bit big for my taste, a little bit fat. So again, we could come up here and dot resize this guy. And let's say change this to 75 by 30, cut it in half in size. I happen to know that those are the images, the image size that I want. And now our button is smaller. It looks fantastic. So super easy to use images with Tkinter. Again, just remember, you're gonna use them with another widget. There is no like image widget. You have to put your image on a label widget or on a button widget or on any sort of widget. You can use a canvas, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, you can put images on just about any widget, I think. Put them in a frame if you want, uh, <laughs> right? So very cool, and that's all there is to it. So those are images, and be sure to check out the next video where we'll talk about radio buttons. It should pop up right around there, and it should be a lot of fun. 
And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing's awesome. Over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address. And I'll send that right out to you. My name is John Alder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.